When you buy something, you expect it to be of a certain standard, although sometimes things can go wrong. From burgers sprayed with cleaning product to Girl Scout cookies stuffed with needles and razor blades, we count 20 of the worst cases of product tampering. Number 20. Scott Savino. A former cook at Burger King was accused of spraying cleaning products on the food he was cooking. Specific to the case was the Whopper hamburger served to Monroe County's sheriff deputy. The deputy became ill after eating the sandwich in April of 2000. The boy was acquitted of assault but was convicted on felony charges of food tampering. It was suggested that the guy just had OCD and was just trying to make the food really clean for the customers. Number 19. Jello Pudding from 2010. Now what do you do if you don't want to pay $1.40 for a pack of jello pudding powder? If you're like Alexander and Christine Clement, a couple in their 60s from Long Island, you buy the pudding, replace the powder with a mixture of sand and salt, and return the package to the grocery store for a refund. That's exactly what this old couple did, striking four stores, purchasing and returning about 50 packages of the pudding. The tampering was discovered when a customer who bought one of the fraudulent pudding packages complained to the grocery store, and surveillance video led police to the old couple. The couple was indicted on multiple counts of petty larceny and tampering. Number 18. No Frills Food Store in Canada In October 2010, this particular store was hit by a safety alert of two cases of food tampering. One customer found a screw in a container of veggie dip, while another found a needle in the packaging of a no-name Italian-styled veggie packet. More serious cases were found the same year, but in different No Frills stores, involving a needle inside a sausage. The next time you find yourself eating veggie dip, make sure there aren't any needles or screws in it. Safer communities together. Number 17. Fentanyl from 1998. Sometimes tampering can be motivated by the desperation of a drug addict. In 1998, a cardiac intensive care unit in the United Arab Emirates saw an outbreak of a deadly bacteria. Investigators traced the bacteria to vials of fentanyl, a potent narcotic. A respiratory therapist addicted to the drug had extracted the fentanyl for himself and replaced the liquid with water, which had been contaminated with the bacteria. Number 16. Tiger Brands Removing the best before and used before dates on any product is easy. All you need is a nail polish remover and a piece of cotton wool. A customer complained to a manager at a grocery store that a batch of muffin mix was past its use by date. The products were removed immediately, however they reappeared soon after without any dates. The store employee took the time to erase the dates off the boxes with nail polish remover instead of sending the stock back to the supplier, causing hundreds of people to get ill. Number 15. Candy. On March 19, 1984, two armed masked men broke into the home of a president of a confectionery company in Japan. They tied up his family and abducted him. The next morning, they contacted the director of the company and demanded a ransom of 1 billion yen and 100 kilograms of gold. The president of the company managed to escape from his captors three days later, but the story didn't end there. Two months later, the company began receiving letters from a person or a group calling itself the monster with 21 faces that claimed to have contaminated all of the candies with potassium cyanide. Number 14. Exedrin, USA. In Washington state in 1986, two people died after taking cyanide-laced Exedrin. A man named Bruce McCall was the first to die, a result of emphysemia, doctors said. Then, a woman by the name Susan Snow died after taking extra strength, Exedrin. The company instituted a nationwide recall of the Exedrin. McCall's wife, Stella, then came forward with the information that her husband had also taken Exedrin, which turned out to have the same lot number. She filed a wrongful death lawsuit against the company, as did Snow's husband. An indictment finally came in December 1987, where they found out the person responsible for the tampering was Bruce McCall's wife, Stella. Apparently, she killed her husband in order to collect on the insurance. Number 13. Jeffa Oranges. The 
four children of the Berg family in the Netherlands were rewarded with a Jeffa orange for dessert, but were alarmed by the fruit's strange taste. When the family took a closer look, they saw little chunks of metal in the oranges, and the parents rushed their kids to hospital to have their stomachs pumped. A Palestinian militant group calling itself the Arab Revolutionary Army claimed responsibility, telling the Dutch government that it had injected citrus fruit from Israel with mercury in order to induce panic and disrupt Israel's economy. Number 12. Tylenol, 1982. The most infamous case of product tampering is the Tylenol crisis of 1982, in which seven people in the Chicago area died after taking what they thought was extra strength Tylenol, but was in fact potassium cyanide. The case is still unsolved. In addition to the death toll, what makes this case remarkable is that it led to tough anti-tampering laws, as well as a massive shift in how consumer goods are packaged. Sadly, the Tylenol case prompted a series of copycats which continued through the late 80s. Number 11. Sudafed, USA, 1991. Kathleen Danica and Stanley McWhirter died in Washington State after taking cyanide laced Sudafed, a decongestant. The manufacturer recalled the product across the whole of the US. Even after being recalled, three other tampered bottles of Sudafed were found on store shelves. A woman by the name Jennifer Melling took a Sudafed that her husband Joseph had given to her to stop her snoring. Soon after taking it, she became unconscious. Joseph, her husband, called 911 and Jennifer was rushed to the hospital. She survived. But in August 1992, Police arrested Joseph, the husband, after determining that he had purchased the sodium cyanide weeks before the poisoning. Once again, spouses killing each other using sodium cyanide. Number 10. Sizzler Restaurants, 2006. A diner at a Sizzler restaurant in Queensland, Australia, discovered pellets of rat poison in her soup. And at another location, the same pellets were found in a pasta sauce. Shortly thereafter, all Sizzler locations across Australia suspended salad bar service. The culprit, who issued no demands or threats of extortion, turned out to be a mentally unstable woman from Brisbane. And luckily, nobody suffered ill effects from the rat poison. Number 9. Marvin D. Washington Jr. Marvin Washington was a 19-year-old employee at McDonald's in Simpsonville. He was caught on camera in April of 2012, spitting into his customer's tea. The customers came through the drive-thru ordering two sweetened teas. When they found out the teas were not sweetened, they came back to reorder. Again, the same issue ensued, and they went back home to add their own sweetener. Once opening, they found Flynn floating in their tea and called the police. Marvin Washington now faces up to 20 years in jail for the incident. Number 8. Bromo Seltzer, USA, 1899. It was not the first tampering case of its era, but certainly one of the most famous. On Christmas Eve, 1898, Harry Cornish, the director of the New York Knickerbockers Athletic Club, received a package at the club. Inside was a silver bottle holder and a Bromo Seltzer bottle. There was also a small gift envelope, but with no card inside. Harry thought it was a playful hint to avoid excessive drinking over the holidays. He took both the bottle holder and the bottle home. A few nights later, a relative of Harry's who admired the bottle holder awoke with a headache. Catherine Adams, a friend of Harry's, took some of the Bromo Seltzer, which she said tasted bitter. Then, Harry also took a sip. The drink's bitter taste resulted from something that had been added to the Bromo Seltzer, in this case, cyanide. An hour later, Catherine Adams, Harry's friend, was dead. And although sickened, Harry survived. Number 7. Ground Beef, 2003. A supermarket in Grand Rapids, Michigan, recalled 1,700 pounds of ground beef after 111 people fell ill with nicotine poisoning. Randy J. Bertram, an employee at the store, had mixed insecticide into the meat in an attempt to get his supervisor in trouble. 
The victims included about 40 children, a pregnant woman and a 67-year-old man with heart problems. Fortunately, although the amount of insecticide in a quarter pound burger made from the tainted meat could have been lethal, but nobody died or suffered long-term health effects. Bert Ram, the guy that did it, was sentenced to nine years in prison and was ordered to pay over $12,000. Number six, Awanaman Sea, Japan, 1985. Awanaman Sea, advertised above, a very popular energy drink in Japan, was the most common target in the 1985 vending machine tampering death. About 12 people died in Japan in 1985 after consuming drinks laced with drugs from vending machines. The death toll across Japan may be even higher than the reported 12, making the so-called vending machine murders possibly the deadliest product tampering case in history. Number 5. Bottled Water, 2003 About 30 Italians were sent to hospital after drinking water contaminated with bleach. Small quantities of the poisonous liquids had been injected under the plastic bottle caps. No one claimed responsibility for the acts, but police suspect the tampering could have been the work of an anti-capitalist or eco-terrorist. Although the perpetrator was dubbed the Aqua Bomber, incidents sprung up in more than 20 different cities, leading police to believe that numerous copycats were involved. Number 4. Joseph Cartwell In 2009, a former Ohio deputy was accused of giving an inmate a bologna sandwich that was rubbed against another inmate's genitals. Yes, this really happened. The man was given a $500 fine plus court fees. And apparently the inmate said he thought it tasted a bit salty, but ate it anyway. So, there you go. Next time you order a sandwich somewhere, give it the old sniff test just to make sure. Number 3. Baby Food, 1986 Baby food seems to be a regular target for tampering. Great Britain faced its worst case of food tampering in 1989, when slivers of glass, razor blades, pins and caustic soda were found in the products of two of the nation's largest baby food manufacturers, Heinz and Town Gate. The scare began with a blackmail trying to extort $1.7 million from Heinz and then escalated as copycats capitalized on the initial report. More recently, in 2004, two jars of baby food were found to be contaminated with ground castor beans, which contained trace amounts of a poison. One of the jars contained a note warning that the baby food had been contaminated. Number 2. Girl Scout Cookies 1984. The American institution of door-to-door -door Girl Scout cookie sales suffered a blow in 1984 when pins, needles, and other foreign objects were found in boxes of cookies in at least 17 states, resulting in reports of pierced gums and injured lips. The Girl Scouts suspended cookie sales that year, and despite the introduction of the new Tampa Evident Box the following year, sales still declined more than 25%, forcing the organization to cut some of its programs. The FBI closed its investigation on the incident in 1985, concluding that there was no evidence of organized tampering, and suggesting that most of the 800 reported incidents were false alarms or copycat cases. Number 1. The Razor Blade Teenager An unknown teenager was accused in 2003 of slipping razor blades into apple pies at a fast food restaurant. Although we don't know where, most people think it happened at McDonald's. He underwent psychological evaluation to determine if he was mentally capable of standing trial. So the next time you buy an apple pie, give it the old double check just to make sure. With that said, I think we can agree that this is one of the worst cases of product tampering.